Yeah, well, I don't know that they're allowed to speak, but we can have them do a reaction. Okay, so what am I trying to do? We're trying to admit um, all. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to. Because <laughs> I call gloves hand socks and he calls gloves gloves. And he's like, well, why do you call them hand socks? And I say to make it funner. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, is the sound working? I we're gonna we're gonna have everybody give do a reaction if they can hear us. So I'm admitting everybody. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so everybody is admitted. Um, can everybody see? Go ahead and throw a reaction in there if you guys can see. Can you hear me? Okay, Tiffany said yeah. And Tara says yeah. Okay, so we're good. Great. So thank you guys. Thank you everyone for coming. This is so exciting. We are here to kick off Youth Apprenticeship Week. Um, my name is Danielle Gamirovich. I am the Pre-Apprenticeship Supervisor at the Apprenticeship and Training Office in the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry. I am joined with colleagues uh, Chelsea Llewellyn, the Pre-Apprenticeship pre and Training Representative, and we are also joined by a special guest, Secretary Timothy Walker. It's a really exciting time um, to, to be joined with all of you. We have quite a lineup of, uh, of people to speak with you today. Um, so I want to thank everyone first. I want to thank the Finishing Trades Institute of Western PA for having us today. Um, and I also want to thank all of you here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Cool. So, uh, just a little background. This is um, one of the reasons that we're all here. I wanted to make sure that everyone um, could hear the stories of all of you to um, talk about the benefits of apprenticeship, the apprenticeship pathway, and pre apprenticeship, um, and the exciting opportunities that are afforded to people that they may have not known about otherwise, right? Without landing in this in this pathway. Um, so before we jump into the questions for all of you, I just want to mention that the Pennsylvania Apprenticeship and Training Office is uh, we do handle the oversight of all program developments, um, policy and compliance efforts for registered apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship. And so to share with all of you today, we have 115 registered pre-apprenticeship programs. 81 of them are serving high school aged youth, which is very exciting. Um, we have 1,554 registered apprenticeship programs with 15,645 active apprentices in the state. That's so awesome. Um, 1,364, so 1,364 active pre-apprentices and then um, Finishing Trades Institute of Western PA alone has 296 active apprentices. Um, so right now I'm gonna hand things over to Chelsea to go ahead and kick off the questions. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually gonna start with the, the apprentices first and let them give uh, two to three minutes of their story. So Nick, do you wanna start? You can go. <laughs> okay. Stay there. Stay there. Okay. Nick Rosenspiel. I started through CPC, started with Debbie Equipment uh, my sophomore year. Got into it, fell in love with it, and I grew up around it. My whole family's been into it, working for being the crane operators, running just other companies, all that stuff. So 
I mean, I'm sort of falling over the beginning, you know, for the years, hearing about all the people getting into the union, hearing kind of the union was the top notch to get into. So, I mean, I kind of set my goals high. I wanted to be able to do the best of the best for myself. That's how I got here. It's <laughs> Uh, Tamara White uh, from Malibu, CA, uh, with Steve Brady, four four nine. Uh, I found out about them through a guy named Anthony Marshall. He's a recruiter for his team players, and uh, I did a ten week program with them. Then uh, I got an opportunity to do medical training for Carl's, and then uh, got into the team players now in the first year apprenticeship. Hi, uh, uh, I graduated last year from high school. I'm 19. I started tipping the end of February. Um, I'm liking it. It's really great. And I'm trying to move forward with this and go like break away with five years. Uh, my name's Shane Quinn. I'm with uh, Trade Institute of Pittsburgh. Uh, I was just uh, looking to expand my um, knowledge of the trades whenever I was looking for it. I have a little bit of background in plumbing and took a 10 year gap to work in politics in Harrisburg with the rest of you guys. So <laughs> I'm glad to be back with the uh, people working with their hands and I uh, hope to continue the rest of my life with it. Uh, Michael Wagner, I'm a first year uh, commercial painter apprentice here at UBC 57. Uh, my dad, I actually followed my dad's footsteps. He's a drama finisher back in 2006. I just followed him here, switched up to a painter, but I'm proud of it. My name's Jonathan Crace. I'm a second year commercial carpenter apprentice. Uh, I'm a third generation carpenter and I'm um, continuing the bloodline. Yeah. My name's Vitaliano Pizzonia. I got into the carpenters when I was 18, right out of high school. And I started off doing scaffold and then I moved to interiors. I enjoy it. I wanted to forward with maybe creating my own business one day, maybe making more out of it. I enjoy learning about the trade. That's what I cherish the most. I like that something someone can't take away from me is my skills. So that's what I enjoy the most. I'm Rose Knapp. I graduated high school 2019. I actually didn't know too much about the trade, so. I went to college for biochemistry. <laughs> it was rough. So COVID hit, didn't work out. One of my buddies, he went into the union straight out of high school. His father's in there too. He's a floor coverer. So he told me to look into this, went to the seminars and it's been here since I'm three years in. So doing good. Thanks. It's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and ask you guys some questions. Whoever wants to answer it can, um, but you guys don't all have to answer it if you don't want to. Okay, um, so what attracted you most to the pre-apprenticeship apprenticeship career path? I would say it's definitely the learning, you know, about it because in apprenticeship, there's not many people that are out there willing to teach. So I wanted to be able to work and learn at the same time, and I thought the apprenticeship was perfect for, you know, being able to learn as you worked and that was my big thing. I didn't want to sit in a classroom and just listen to someone talk. I wanted to watch someone do it and I wanted to be on either side, you know, working with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll piggyback off of that. that was, <laughs> it, it, instruction is such a wide variety of things and, and to be able to go in the, to an area where you have instructors teaching you those things and taking you step by step with no pressure of messing things up on the job compared to in the classroom it's yeah it's real helpful yeah. uh -huh. i like how it's just a skill i mean you have that for life even if you don't complete your apprenticeship that's something that you'll always have you'll always have that knowledge and you could use it every day so um I got I got into it because I want to expand my knowledge, uh, different trades, uh, a little bit of plumbing background, uh, fell off 
for a decade, but now I'm in the Trade Institute of Pittsburgh and uh, they're kicking me back into gear. And uh, I really enjoy the learning process. Uh, all the instructors have four decades of experience, uh, carpentry instructor and masonry instructor. So they're really, um, you know, they're starting us from the basics and the building us up and, you know, uh, sky's the limit. From from the bottom, you got to start at the basics, though. So that's uh, the pre apprenticeship program with TIP has been uh, uh, learned a lot in the last five weeks. So I'm looking forward to finishing it up and seeing where it takes me. Uh, I always like hands on work. Uh, I could do real good in the classroom, but like but hands on work, I could be more better by seeing it come um, by building some. Like seeing it build up from where you started, at, and I just watched it all. Uh, like when you finish your project and whatever you're working on, like you can just see what you worked on, and like be like, yeah, I built that. Probably what you built, like. Yeah. I'm pretty much summing all up. <laughs> Say to the benefits, honestly. Um, learn from the guys that's been there already. Um, as I've been, I've been doing 18 weeks, I've already learned a lot so far. So, boot camp for sure. Uh, definitely having some grit. Um, I'm saying, like everybody said, the hands on pretty much. You know, I wasn't a book guy myself. Teacher didn't talk to me, it'll go right over my head. I'm like, I don't know what you just said, but uh, if I say hands on, I learned a lot better than it that way. And kind of like off of what they said, being able to be told something and then also see it be done hands on helps. I mean, hold it in for me a lot better than just someone writing it down or showing me a picture of how to do it. So that's the one thing I've always loved about the pre apprenticeship or even the apprenticeship. Awesome. Okay. So, how has this impacted your life? For me, uh, since I haven't started my apprenticeship yet, the pre-apprenticeship has me to the point where I'm ready to leave high school making a guaranteed twenty dollars an hour and ready to start working full hour shifts instead of working just small little jobs on the side and you know, stuff like that and ready to take my life up at a young age. Um with me, I just think it's uh, I don't have the paycheck to paycheck anymore. Uh and nobody can't take away from me and job security. Uh, for me, it's something like doing something that I actually love, like getting up every day, knowing that I'm going to do something that I actually like and not be like stressful and like <laughs> help my family get like a company, family business and like just expand and like go around, build stuff. Uh -huh. I'll, I'm with him. It's it's all about the stability, um, building a future for you and future family. Um, just having steady work and uh, uh, knowledge as well. I mean, you take it wherever you go. You can move across the country. You still do it because uh, you already know it. So I would say um, I enjoy. I like waking up every morning, enjoying painting, having fun with it. About it, just having a good job that I actually enjoy doing. Yeah, not only are you able to, to raise a family and, and carry on with yourself and your living and everything like that, but you're also getting uh, uh, like you get discipline and, and the hard work and everything. You learn not to cut corners, not only on your job, but day to day life. Well, it's changed my life because I wake up every day and I'm proud of what I see outside the buildings and understanding the whole process of how, you know, everything's built, how everything started and knowing that one day I'll be able to do that same thing and hopefully, you know, I'm a business doing it or something, you know, I love I just changed my life. How I look at buildings and everything else in the morning it makes me proud. I'd have to say the stability as well. I mean, it's nice always having work, always staying busy, not having to worry about any of that. So I appreciate that a lot. What are your plans for the future? I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stay where I'm at for as long as I can. So I've got a pretty set foundation. I know everyone who works there. I've been there since I started my apprenticeship for three years. So 
they're keeping me working. So I'm gonna stay there. Well, my plan is for the future to maybe expand on this and have you know employ uh, carpenters maybe one day have you know build you know just simply build houses buildings. I I just want to change you know planet to be honest. I just want to put buildings on a planet, make it yeah. give people jobs doing what I do and teaching the trade. You know that's the most important thing about it. Yeah, I would say. Uh, just in the future, near future, just running work possibly for the next couple of years. And like how he's saying, putting buildings in the ground and creating the future. I would like to uh, just get more involved with my union. Um, you know, that's what starts by showing up to more meetings and just volunteering a lot more. And But yeah, I just like to get more involved. Uh, for my future, I want to buy 100 acres and build my own house from the ground up. You know, Salt Lake's going to help me. So, Perfect. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to, for the future, you know, uh, get that American dream picket fence, you know, white kids, dog, fire swing in the front yard. Um, that's my, that's what I envision in the future, but I'd like to build my own house one day and, uh, you know, brick by brick, lay one, lay one brick, lay one brick right. That's the, uh, the monitor to have. Um, I'd like to have a job in the carpentry field, build houses, travel, build other buildings in different states, build houses for my family, friends, you go help me too. <laughs> <clears throat> and um, go forward doing that and just own my own businesses in different states and one in Pittsburgh too. Yeah. I'm about to do the same thing, building my house. Um, and then finish up my apprenticeship sort of first of all. Hopefully get some more young people in and uh, travel more because we do every uh, opportunity to travel on this union. Mm -hmm. I'd say go out to work that you do. Uh, I agree with 100 acres and build your own house. <laughs> complete this uh, apprenticeship and see where it takes me. What would you tell someone who is interested in the pre-apprenticeship or apprenticeship pathway? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, other than that, kind of like everyone says, you get to learn something every day. And I mean, it helps a lot with people, especially learning how to work with other people, because it don't matter what you do, and we're all going to be working side by side. So I mean, it makes a lot of friends, makes a lot of co workers, everything makes for a good life. You no, know, so I go more too. Um, definitely take a lot out of you. And uh, determine who you are, honestly, as a man or woman. Um, and it does. For me, it's been a game changer for me. So I definitely say to do that for somebody else too as well. Yeah, I say do it. Thanks. Because it's way more behind than doing the trade. Like you can build relationships with people like a tip. I build a whole lot of relationships with people I never knew I was gonna meet. And like it could be fun. You could like think and you could just be yourself. Like you could do your own work and like be judgmental free. It's good. Um for pre apprenticeship, I'd say just just do it if you're interested in it. Do it. Um, try it out. Uh, anything you learn, you're gonna be able to take with you for the rest of your life. Even if you don't stick with it, you'll be able to continue. You know, if someone has a question about carpentry or electric or anything we guys do, you know, you still have that knowledge. Even if you decide to go a different path, you'll still be able to have that knowledge for the rest of your life. So if you're thinking about doing a apprenticeship or pre apprenticeship, you should. Definitely give it a try, and if it's not for you, it's not for you, but uh, you should stick it out and finish the program you're in, and I think you'll like the results. Yeah, I would tell them to do it as well. Um, it's, you know, you meet all kinds of new people, learn all kinds of new skills. That could be very valuable in your future. Yeah, I definitely said to join also because not only are you learning, learning the trades, you know that you're learning the right way of doing things because you got skilled instructors that have been doing it for a long time now, passing on your knowledge to the next generation. Right, like there's a lot of criticism that comes into joining 
the apprenticeship that these guys are just trying to teach you. It's uh, very simple. You know, the apprenticeship is only there to learn and it's they were there to teach you as well. So, I mean, the big thing is, you know, just learning as you are in the apprenticeship. So it gives you something to work forward to. That's why I think the apprenticeship's great. You know, we have another option in a way. Um, Let's see. We have a lot of great programs here. I love learning everything that I've done here, but I would definitely tell people to look into it more because we have so many different things to do. And honestly, you got to be tough for it. You got to be willing to work. You can't be slacking off here like at any other job. And you got to love it. You got to love what you're going to be doing because this is like a career. So it's not just a job you'll have for a little bit. Does anyone want to share first year wages for any of your programs? Yeah, our uh, first year wage right now is our take up is 2140, but we also have a benefit package behind that that is, you know, give or take fluctuates, but we have benefits, uh, you know, it's 2140. It's pretty good for yeah. coming right out of high school, you know. Yeah and being able to learn something. It's very, very good. It's very good. Thank you. Anyone else? 24 to 10. <sighs> That's a little number every year. Yeah. Five years, five. <clears throat> that would be definitely good. That would be good. Yeah. It's very good. Can I ask you a question? So from the Department of Labor and Industry standpoint, what advice would you have for me and for our apprenticeship office and how to reach young people to tell them about the wonderful pre-apprenticeship programs and apprenticeship programs that are out there? You know, we we often are coming from schools and school districts where people talk about, you know, I, everybody talks about college and who's going to college and the number and what colleges people are going to. But how do we get the message out about these wonderful careers, family sustaining wages and benefits? How do I get that information to people like you if you could think back to your young versions of yourselves i think you have to relate to them you know the younger generations they're way different than the older generation we do many different things like our cell phones you know if you can just relate to them in a certain way to more like their wavelength get the message to them in their way you know maybe on their phone or maybe you know they might like that more and they'll see more opportunities doing it so i think that's one way you could definitely get the message to the younger generation i uh i think um Maybe even looking at having teachers with trade experience in the schools that are interested in doing substitute work or something to really encourage that. Because I know a lot of the teachers that I had in high school, they they never did any of the trades or any experience other than for like the shop class. But it would be nice to have some more people with uh, that kind of experience, construction experience in uh, the schools themselves. I, I know I had one teacher and he had a lawn care company, so, you know, he was one that was easier. You know, he pushed that, but like some of the other ones just they went from school to college back right. to the classroom and they have no really other experiences with right. uh, working with their hands or anything like that. So. Great, thank you. I'll say more like what you're doing right now. Yeah. Hearing everybody's story. You know, I have someone that can relate to them. You know, and then um, yeah, I think that's what it's probably the best thing in social media. I have people on the phone ball day 24 yes. 7. <laughs> I think bringing somebody with you that can relate, that's how to pass like somebody else, like somebody might choose a different career and go a different route. Like she did the biochemic, didn't did turn out to learn. I won't play football, got injured, didn't work out for me, right. and went back to square one. So I just think if you have somebody there with you that can relate, share their story, you know, that way and always go to college, go to college, because college ain't for everybody. And right. college is not always. A great route because at the end of the day, you're still paying all that money back the rest of your life. Exactly right. The union, and you're already good to go. Mm -hmm. I would just say, kind of what he said, because uh, I know with like our school, with being part of the heavy equipment class, we would have a, I can't remember his name, uh, but they came from 66 to come to talk to us. And they talked to just heavy equipment themselves because that was who it was related to. I think you got to do. Have kind of a piece of the cabinet panel like this to have a couple of different people from each uh, union come in and talk to the whole school as who would be interested in something like that work. And that way you might have, you know, maybe a heavy equipment kids thinking about carpentry or even pipe fitters or anything like that, because not everyone is fit to the shop class they take. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I would say that you guys, I know that previously, like when I went to high school, we didn't have a lot of people coming in, giving other options for after high school, mm -hmm. as in like going to college, it was always just high school college and real life. Mm -hmm. So I know our local, they, they've been reaching out to a lot of high schools more often, even though when I graduated too, they send somebody out to just give them a more variety of choices, not just college. I think another thing that scares everyone away is uh, the health issues too. Like uh, a lot of people, you know, you see an old guy smoking cigarettes or something on the job, you know, he's all beat up and everything, but there's always a right way to do it. Like, I think the body was made to move. It was not made to sit down and everything. So that's what we do. We do labor. We, uh, you know, there's always a right way to move this stuff. There's, it's, it's good for you. You know, it's, if you do it right, you can do it forever. I think just spreading awareness. I mean, when I was in school, I didn't know about all of these options, like everyone was saying, and maybe just reaching out to schools, like getting some demonstrations, like our open houses that we have, that's super great. A lot of people come down, just examples and being able to show them things, I think would be good. And I have so. one other question for you. How can we, <clears throat> how can we get more women? interested in the trades and how can we get more diversity and tap sort of different communities of people just ideas perspectives i think it's, it's about the heavy lifting and everything a lot of women think they can't do it because of all the heavy lifting and all the beat up on the body but like i was saying there's a way you can move everything just with a finger you know there is a way to do everything lifting board the right way lifting uh, you know heavy sheets the right way you know, everyone can do it. Uh, you know, it's a matter if you want to do it or not. I would say it's more of women being afraid of the work environment. It's being a male dominant field. Right. And it is, it's intimidating. So, but there are other options. I don't think it's too much about like, we have a couple women at our shop and they do sometimes more than the men there, but <laughs> yeah. uh no, just definitely that they can do it. Just showing, maybe introducing some people, bring more women in to speak to them mm -hmm. that they don't have to be, it doesn't have to be this huge, heavy lifting, like super crazy machinery or anything like that. Gotcha. First part, um, I would I would say to show them the back of the benefit, back of the line. That's, right. That's what got me. I was like, I'm so, you got a retirement plan, that's 401k, like all that good stuff and the health benefits alone. Definitely made a thing. And uh, stability with the two, you don't got to worry about flipping burgers. Oh, God, I got to do 40 hours this week. I'm only getting 20, you know. But I think that's some of the benefit pack. And I definitely want some last. I appreciate that. Any other thoughts? Say so kind of like how she said down there, uh, just spread out and show that it's not all about, you know, lifting this and moving that. And there's all the different parts of the job with, uh, I don't know, something like you heavy equipment. You're not just operating equipment all the time. There's servicing, there's mechanics, there's all the different stuff that doesn't always require all the same manual labor or even all that that scares some people away with that and, uh, bringing women from the trades to come talk to people and show them what they're doing and how they're doing it. I mean, on my side, there's a lot of intricate things that we do. I'm, you guys are more of the outside heavy stuff. I'm no cabinet, so we're doing all interior stuff, super detailed, so. So there's something for everyone, it sounds like, in listening to all of you, no matter what your your interests are or where, <clears throat> how you come to it, sounds like there's just a, a number of opportunities across all of these different trades for you, regardless of where you're coming from. What would you change or add to the program you were participating in? Yeah, that's kind of like a tough question. Like, <laughs> like over the years, I'm sure that that same question was asked, and it was it was you know a problem would occur, and it was addressed, and now it's fixed. So now it's really you know barely anything. It's it's, it's hard to come by something to change really. Okay. Um, with uh, training institutes for Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, um, I would add uh, a few little like. Uh, 
odds and ends, you know, like changing the toilet, changing the light switch, um, just some basic stuff that, you know, you come across in pretty much all the trades, um, just kind of expand to include that basic knowledge. Um, rather than just focus on two, you could kind of throw some of that knowledge in there. And it always is a benefit whenever you know a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of it that crosses over, you know, I think all the trades up here all cross over at some point. So it's good to have a basic knowledge of a little bit of each. I want to change that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd say the only thing I can say if I haven't started my apprenticeship yet for support or for your apprentice, but our school, the only thing I can say that's really needs to change is a ways to get a bigger budget for the schools. Okay. Because I know mean, with our area of PA, it's nowhere near the tax bracket that other parts of PA are. And seeing a class that's got millions of dollars for a budget to almost about a couple hundred thousand shows a complete difference in the experience people have and the knowledge people do compared to the arts. Uh, before you move on, so there's something different about Nick than everyone else here, as far as I know. Um, do you want to tell everyone why you're here? So Nick is um, going into an apprenticeship with the operating engineers, but you what? Yeah, but you're going to, right? But were you one of many? Um, I was one of the, I was the only promotion. Yes. So his program at Connellsville, they have um, the agreement with operator engineers, operating engineers that um, the, the best student gets selected to matriculate into the registered apprenticeship. So Nick, yeah, Nick was chosen as the best. Congratulations. You can go ahead. Um, who has been the most supportive during your participation and in what way? Six. <laughs> I'd say it's definitely the. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the few people. They uh, like to see, you know, as months go on, how much you. Uh, they like to see what they know and then apply it to you, and then you do it. They know best, you know, they've been doing their whole life. It's very interesting for them because they basically teach. They take you in, teach you everything they know, and they don't even have to work. They can watch you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, they're the people that, you know, are most supportive about their apprentices. That's why a lot of people call theirs. And, you know, everyone has their own thing. But I mean, I'd say it's definitely your foreman, people on the job with you, the people you work with, learning what they know. And, uh, yeah. Trades used to be in Pittsburgh. Um, my classmates they support me a lot. The staffs, they support me a lot too. My family members and friends. Um, the staffs, they like make sure you're good like every day. Like they check up on you. Like they want to see a smile on your face, coming in with a good attitude. Like give you reassurance. I'll say our. Uh... All the staff there um, training us, they all have over four decades of experience in their field. So their wealth of knowledge, uh, I feel like sometimes they're, they they want to teach us a little, little, little bit uh, more than they are, but they know that you got to start with the basics and keep doing that task over and over to get it right. And they want to make sure you're doing it right, if not fast. And the speed will come later. They always tell us <laughs> right first time, so you don't have to do it second time. You know, I would say you're definitely a co-worker, but I think a uh, better one would probably be instructors. I'm sure you've done this internship with. Um, I always think if you ever got question, you can always go back to them. They always preach it with us. You know, you know the co-workers will always have an answer. You know, um, I think uh, the instructors always ask the answer so far that I've been through. <laughs> um, they have an like, easier way of getting things done, and I've seen longer ways. I always think their stuff is probably the best support you have besides the family and your coworkers. I would say that's a good thing about being in the union. You're you're networking every day, meeting new people on the job site. You got a 
got a whole a whole union to rely on from instructors, the foreman, the co-workers. You can worst case scenario, you can always call somebody to have your back. <laughs> okay, so this one's a little. It's kind of the same but different. What kind of advice would you give somebody if they wanted to pursue this pathway? <laughs> I would yeah. say just because when you start something and you're not good at it, don't just throw it away and say, oh, you weren't good at it the first time and, and just don't go back to it. Everyone's got a first for everything. So just stick to it. And like how you said, time will come that you'll get faster at things, things will get better. And that's that's kind of the whole the whole bigger picture of the journey. You know, being a first year to a fourth year, you could not have been as good as hanging board your first year, but now you're a master at it your fourth year and that being able to see your work get better and better each year is a, is a big thing. I mean, I'd say only if you say that even if you start off not knowing anything about it, everyone's going to start somewhere. You're going to start at the bottom of your way up to the bottom. I'd say if you start off your first week and be the slowest, worst one in the class, not understand anything, and by the you know, end of your apprenticeship, when you're taking the journeyman's test, you could be the the baddest bricklayer that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or baddest carpenter that has ever come out of trade institute. So it's all about you know making sure you learn the basics, and then you can really just expand from there. Just keep pushing, you know, just go for it. Uh, you gotta be patient with yourself and with your work. Like you gotta be patient to know that you can't get it all in one day. Uh, just be confident in whatever you do. Yeah. They all made, they all made it already. Um, but just just don't give up. You know, you're gonna fail when it happens. Uh don't be hard on yourself. I've been there. Um and things will work out in the day. Oh, and that, um, you know, just because you fail, you know, that means you're learning and you're learning the way not to do it. So it's a new one at the next time, you know, the first time I laid a brick. You know, it wasn't level, it, it, it wasn't good, but, you know, over time, every few weeks, you know, you get better and better and better. And, you know, you even get better over years and decades. And it's just, you know, you know it all by the end of it. It's always learning something. Uh, definitely don't get discouraged. I mean, the good thing about carpentry is everyone has their own way of doing things. There's always, like, new ways to do things. But also, everyone has their own way of doing <laughs> So you could bump heads a little bit. That's all right. It doesn't mean that you're wrong or anything. So don't let any of that discourage you. Everyone's always going to have something to say. They got to put their two cents in. So don't take it personal. We have time for what, Danielle? Uh, sure. OK. Um, what impact have you seen on your community? Have you seen any impacts? I know Tip probably has some stuff to say about that. <laughs> uh, I've seen a lot. Like, we're in the Tip, like, everywhere you go, they be like, oh, you go to that program, they be like, stick with it, stick with it, I'm proud of you. Like, it just makes you, like, kind of hold a higher standard for yourself and be like, Whatever I'm doing with this, like everybody watching, so you know you gotta be like, like your heels and toes, and like your family, like my family, they be so proud. Like ever since I started, I've been here. I'm proud of you, proud of you, like every day. I mean, that feels good here. It just do a lot. It's a great, great program too. I, I think with our program, uh, they cover a lot of the social service needs of of a lot of our classmates, um, you know, from driver's licenses to, you know, getting a roof over your head, um, getting a ride to the doctor, getting a ride here. Um, mm. You know, um, they're there to, they want to see you succeed. And, you know, they want to be hard on you, but they also want to put you in a position to move on and go forward and excel uh, once you leave the program. And I know, They'll be going and checking up on us once we graduate. Um, so, you know, and it's seeing people from different walks, live different backgrounds, 
um, different challenges in life, overcoming that, um, getting through the program, and then seeing them start their job. You know, next Monday, you know, graduate on Friday, but they work on Monday for whatever they choose to do. And it's awesome to see um, just that transition with a lot of people going from, you know, not being confident with their skills or having some issues in their past that they need to overcome and move on from and seeing them, you know, on that graduation day uh, with a smile on their face and they, they have a lot more knowledge and they're ready to go to work and, you know, just on to the next. I think, you know, with our program, we have a thing called the UK events. So anything from picking up trash on the side of the highway to giving somebody that maybe not be more fortunate than others a brand new roof, helping them out or uh, a handicap, you know, something that happened, building a new ramp for them, like the little things like that to be able to give back to the community. Yeah, and I like, uh, so we build it far places too. So people, you know, wake up in the morning, they have to drive, you know, 30 minutes just for a gas station, you know, building something as simple as a gas station in the middle of nowhere to change many people's lives and create jobs for many people as well so you know they don't have to drive 30 minutes in the morning no more it changes their life you know they have a gas station right next to their house now or you know even like a grocery store you don't have to drive an hour away to go and get groceries you can drive right down the road and you have a store you can eat groceries at and that's what we build we build those places we create jobs for these people and we change their lives So um, I have a question from the director of the apprenticeship and training office, Tara Lowe. She's asking who is willing to stay in touch with us at the ATO so we can tell your story and help attract new apprentices and pre-apprentices. Wow. <laughs> All right, I will write this down. Anyone else? Everybody. Uh, everyone. Everybody. All right. <laughs> All. <laughs> All right. Anyone else from uh, virtually that has any questions? All right. Then I guess that concludes our virtual uh, portion. Thank you guys all so much for joining us today. Um, hang on. Someone's typing, guys. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. How did you hear about the program you enrolled in? That is a good question. That is a good one. I thought we touched on that. Just things better. Um, I was shot about a couple points. You know, I was standing about to be like, okay, I'm going a different route. <laughs> um, the guy named Anthony Marshall, he's a recruiter for State Thurs, actually gave me a phone call and was like, hey, we've got an opportunity for you. There's a family program coming up. Uh, we'd love for you to come join. But um, me, I, I got that up so good. Like, yeah. I'm tired of living the way I was living. Um, so I said, bump it and did it. And then, um, from there, like I said earlier, I gave me an opportunity to work for metal trades for McCarls. I did that for like a year, a couple months, and I took the test again, then I got in. Um, and this year was really, really wild because I only took 24 out of 600 people this year. So I really had to go balls to the wall this one. Congratulations. But that's how I got awesome. <laughs> I heard about the Training Institute of Pittsburgh. I was actually been working for a handyman, uh, kind of a helper, and we're doing some brick work on a house. And I was like, you know, looking just to learn a little bit. And the Trade Institute popped up on my searches, and I put an application in, and uh, they called me within a month or so. And now I'm a month into the program. And I've learned a lot more in five or six weeks than I did in all the years I've seen college, that's for sure. So, uh, you know, that's that's how I found out. I was just looking for something to learn. And uh, they happen to be one of the few places that will teach a masonry in Pittsburgh. So, I heard about it from my high school football mom, my skinny. 
she also worked in the building to consider and go to Dante Green. Um, they both like they both good persons. So I knew like getting in, I knew it was going to be something great. I just had to trust the process <laughs> that I did. And it's really going great for me. Too, right? I should add before anyone else um, says anything that tip is the the they have like a level one of their pre apprenticeship and that's the masonry and then the carpentry is once they've finished the masonry they can move on to carpentry if they choose and that's what you guys have done so good job. Anyone else want to share? Add to her question about how to get more people into it would be get more unions out there, even with you guys at one of the career fairs, to add information about any of the unions that are there. So there's having like our school, we may get just the operators to come in there. I don't know for the other classes, whether the carpentry union or any of them come into just the shops themselves, but I know we've had uh, our career fair recently and it was just local 66 was there. And I think it'd be a good way to get more students and it's just not only at the text, but at the high schools also. Well, how did how did you hear about the heavy equipment program at Connellsville? So my dad actually teaches at Connellsville also. He is a, a culinary arts instructor there. So when I was younger, I mean, everyone wants to do with their dad growing up. So I <laughs> and um, took that, didn't enjoy it. Like when I finally learned out what the career was actually like, I mean, working holidays working all that stuff. <laughs> I didn't like it. And so I started looking around and like I said, I mean, I grew up around construction, around equipment and running since I was young. So when I heard about the new uh, class that opened up, I believe it opened up six years ago or seven years ago, I figured why not give it a shot? And, mm -hmm. and then I fell in love with it ever since. Yes. Anyone else want to share? Oh, I, uh, I found out from someone. I had a buddy that was a little older than me. That was also a man that worked with sand, sold IT landscape, just like me. I was a landscaper when I was younger, and I knew that I didn't want to just sit in the desk all day. So I knew I wanted to find an opportunity. And first, I tried a different a handful of trades. And then uh, he was a carpenter, and he said, you know, he thinks it would work for me. So I started off working in a mill, and it was not, you know, it was not what I thought a carpenter would do. So I ended up moving from the mill and then moving to interiors. And, uh, you know, that's how I found out about it through a buddy that was already in the carpenters, Colin Anderson. So, you know, I would say, like, ask, ask people in your community the way, you know, people that you respect and want your life to be like. And that's how I ended up going. My neighbor was in the union, my dad was in the union. So they they turned out pretty good. So I figured out. <laughs> Did you know a lot about what they did before? Yeah, yeah so I'm a third generation carpenter and my, my so my grandpa he had his own commercial uh commercial construction business and then my dad was in the union. So it was always, you know, from when I was little to now, it was always going out, you know, building a deck for grandma or again. You know, <laughs> so, so this was just like a great way of, you know capitalizing on all of that. Yeah, I know some yes. construction, but I don't know if this was the right way or the wrong way. So now that there's an instructor teaching it, we know it's the right way going forward. I asked that because it could go either way. Sometimes you could be third generation and they don't talk about it at all. Yeah. So the fact that they shared it with you, that's yeah. pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so I think we are going to wrap things up here. So um, everyone in virtual land, thank you again so much for joining us. And we will see you next Friday for our uh, next session in Philadelphia at Finishing Trades Institute. Thanks so much again for joining.